Hi, good morning and welcome to our Church Together worship service. Some of you will be shocked that we're starting on time, but it's amazing how easier it is to start on time when it's just the, the four of us. So, uh, Jen's here with us today. Say hi, Jen. Hi. Adam is here. Hello. Mike's here. Hey. And of course, I'm here, Pastor Andy Searles, and we are thrilled that you are here. I know we've got some folks uh, watching from Tennessee, Mike's family, shout out to them. I know some of my family and friends are watching from the UK, and I believe that if the internet is working properly, we have a couple, George and Becky, who are watching from their boat in Panama. So we're thrilled, um, not to see you because we can't see you, but we're thrilled that you can see, see us. We do hope that you're doing okay. It uh, has been a strange and an unusual and bizarre week. It's almost like every day, almost hourly, there's new news coming down about what's happening with this virus. And so uh, we hope that you're being safe. We hope that you're being responsible. Uh, one of the, the, the side notes though, of this pandemic is all the dad jokes that have been told. And uh, honestly, there's, there's really some bad ones. And I don't think I've seen this abundance of poor dad jokes ever before. It's almost, it's almost like there's a pandemic happening oh, <laughs> with, 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 all these, with all these dad jokes. Anyway, without further ado and further bad jokes, let me um, pray for us. I did tell these guys that joke earlier and they laughed honestly then. <laughs> rather it's still the, bad. It's the still big bad. laugh you just saw, saw in that moment. But let me pray for us and we'll uh, get started. Lord, um, again, this feels unusual. It feels... Uh, vulnerable but Jesus you are here you're here with us as we sit in our worship space you're here with every watcher and listener at home as they sit around their screen Lord in these difficult times we continue to ask that you would be present with us we ask that you would encourage us that you would fill us with uh, your hope and bless and honor this time that spend together. And we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. So glad you guys are joining us. Um, I'm going to open with a song today that actually I wrote about a decade ago. If you remember, uh, we had a, a pretty deep recession in 2008, and I was actually in between jobs at the time, and I was searching myself for answers. And um, I know that that's starting to impact friends and family for a lot of us. Uh, there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of uncertainty. And uh, this is what I feel the Lord was telling me then, and I hope it speaks to you now. It's called My Hope, and let it encourage you today.
Mike, that was really beautiful. You have you have such a gift, and we're so grateful that you share it uh, with us and allow us to worship God through through your gifts. Praise the Lord. I hope it helps you, because that helped me. Uh, if we look less at our problems and more at Jesus and our Savior, I think that's the key to, to our hope and our peace uh, in this time of uncertainty. And hope is such an important commodity right now, and I think one of the primary roles of a church, when I say church, I'm talking about you, we're not canceling church during this season, we're just being church differently. And it's our job to dispense hope, and in some ways, um, as things get worse, our opportunity to do that increases. So over this past week, um, as a church, we've been asking what can we do to function as the church that brings hope in this world, in this time? And we've kind of realigned, pivoted a little bit to try and do that in a tangible and real way. And so over the next few weeks, however long this is, and we're praying that it's not too much longer, we want to try and do our best to make sure that nobody feels alone, even as we're isolated. I think one of the challenges to the church today is to say, how can we create a different kind of community, even when we're separated? And so as a church, there's a number of ways that we want to do that. First of all, we want to uh, continue to extend care safely and wisely to one another. Secondly, we want to figure out how to serve one another because the needs all around us are increasing. And it's one of the roles of the church to make a difference and to serve. But most importantly, firstly, and we're going to be talking about this today and over the next week, we want to call you to pray. In the midst of all this uncertainty, we can get in touch with our faithful, unchanging God as we come to Him in prayer. So we're going to talk about that most of our uh, service today, and I'm going to share a, a brief word about some questions that we need to ask and some prayers that we want to pray. But Jen, uh, let, me, let me kind of bring you into the conversation. Uh, how, how's things in your household right now? Well, things are doing well in our house. We're staying together and trying to get through this the best we can. I know off, off camera you said that Matt is driving you crazy, but I mean, that's probably a normal thing. <laughs> that's, that's, anyway. normal. that's totally normal. <laughs> but um, talk to us about how we can care for one another, and what are some ways that our church um, can continue to, 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 to care? So I first want to say, hi church family, I'm so happy to be able to talk to you even though I can't see your faces. I'm picturing each of you and hoping that you're doing well at home. And I just want to help encourage you that now is the time that we talk about being the hands and feet of Jesus. Maybe we can't get out there physically right now, but we definitely can still reach out to each other. And so as a church family, I hope that you all will be able to communicate with each other. We've got technology, so let's use it. Let's get on our texting. Let's call each other. We can use FaceTime and we can still see each other. And so I want to encourage you as a family to do that and then also to reach out to your personal friends, family, neighbors. Um, I know we all have our elderly family and friends and so they, in this time especially, would love to get phone calls and, and from you. So I just want to encourage everyone that we don't have to stay isolated. We've got the technology to, to care for each other still. And so if we can be in tune to uh, what we know about how things are going in each other's households, we can reach out and see if there's anything we can do just to bring some, um, some good communication. And there are friends and family we maybe haven't spoken to in a while, and this is a great time to just remember that it is time to do that. Um, I hope that it will be an encouragement that I'm working on being able to email the families, the children's ministry families, so if, you can be looking out for an email from me. Then today, for example, I'm going to follow up on our conversation about prayer and send a video and some other uh, things that you can do to talk to the kids about what's going on. So just want to encourage everyone that we are not just stuck in the house. You know, we can still uh, take this time to really reach out to each other. Let's create a human touch for each other 
uh, in this time. One of the ways you can do that, as you're watching this video right now, if you look at the comments section, I'm sure that some of your friends uh, from church are watching. Um, just reach out to them and say hi. And if you're not friends, uh, add them as a friend, and, and that's another great way to, to care for one another. But over the next uh, days and weeks, we want to figure out how to better care for one another. Also, we want to serve. And Adamir, you've been on the front lines of serving this week uh, because of your job. Tell us a little bit um, specifically about some of the ways that uh, we can uh, serve with you and make a difference, uh, even in this time of isolation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, kind of piggy back off what Jen was saying about when you reach out and you care for people opportunities to serve just come up, right? As you're talking, you see needs. So specifically what we've been doing is there's a lot of children who they need a place to go regardless. Um, whether their parents are grocery store workers or healthcare professionals, or they're just in a job where they haven't gotten the okay to work from home yet. So we have these students that are here and they have to be here Monday through Friday at the after school program that I work with and a real need is actual meals. Uh, the average school, if they're a lunch location, doesn't start till 10 a.m. Well, if you're a mom or dad and you have to drop off your kid, well, you're dropping off your kid at 8 a.m., 7, if, if it's a need. There's no way for that child, if they're seven years old, to even get a meal, to even get breakfast or get lunch. So what we are doing is we're collecting ingredients. You can go to our Church Together website and uh, kind of see specific ways to reach out to us, but certain ingredients like box macaroni or hamburgers and hot dogs or chicken nuggets, right? We all love chicken nuggets, especially the dinosaur type. Um, but all of those types of stuff, and we'll take those in and on our kitchen on campus, we'll, we'll do quick meals for all of them. Uh, also apples, fruit, granola bars, just a handout. Again, you can go on our website to see all of those things, or you can reach out to me and my email's listed as well. Um, again, it, it's just an opportunity to serve people, and if you're not able to do that, you do what Jen's saying, and you reach out and just see what people need. Um, I'm sure there are elderly couples or, or seniors that just need someone to go shopping for them. Um, all because we're social distancing doesn't mean that we stop being Christ in our community. It just means it looks differently, like Andy was saying, but there are great opportunities serve no matter which way that you do it that's just one specific way you can yeah and a great uh, a little shout out to Aaron and Missy um, I don't know if they're watching hey if you are but uh, there was a lady yesterday who needed some help with uh, some groceries because she was uh, isolating because she wanted to be uh, careful because of some health conditions and they said hey what do you what do you need and we joined the dots and they went to the store got her stuff and there'll be more opportunities to that so if you have need or you can help, go to our website and all the details are there about how we can connect and help join the dots. As a church, we want to join the dots and help people serve. Uh, Adam, just uh, quickly, um, who makes the best chicken nuggets? I know, you, I know you've got an opinion on that. All right, so like I said, I'm partial to the dinosaur ones and I like to make sounds when I'm dumping them into ketchup. Boy, hey, okay. I, I'm around kids all, all the time, so you got to make it fun. Um, boy, you know, Tyson's always good. As long as I, really short story, I kind of hate chicken nuggets in the microwave. Oh, yeah. I, I'm one of those people, you got to bake them, you got to leave them in perfectly, get the perfect amount. Exactly, Mike understands. So, um, but honestly, whatever people are willing to donate, I'll, I'll take. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Tremendous insight there about um, chicken nugget preparation. Too. So, a little added bonus to our listeners today. We're glad that you get that. So, we want to call call you to care for one another. We want to call you to serve with us, and we want to join the dots of serving. But we also want to call you to prayer, because God is doing something in this season. Just because much of our world is slowing down and stopping, it doesn't mean God is. And I, I could make a pretty strong argument that actually God is amping up what he wants to do in this hour. And the way we get in touch with that, the way we hear from him, the way we learn the lessons, the way we respond is through prayer. And so over the next uh, few days, we're going to be sending you some tools 
as to how you can pray better in your homes and pray better personally. So look out for those. But we want to spend a little bit of time praying now. And I know it may feel a little bit weird as you look into your screen, uh, but no one can see you, so uh, feel free to bow your heads and your hearts and close your eyes, and we're going to pray together. I'm going to ask Jen to pray for our children and families. I'm going to ask Adam here to pray for our community and some of the needs, and I'm going to wrap this up by praying for the world. So would you bow your hearts and your heads with me, and let us pray. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you so much for who you are. I, I'm realizing just in this moment that you have been preparing us in different ways for this than we even can realize as we in Children's Church have been focusing a lot on learning about the Holy Spirit in our lives. I am currently just realizing that you've prepared the kids' hearts for this in the way that they know that the Holy Spirit is with them and that your Holy Spirit is there to guide them now, that you, you are with us always, and we just have to recognize that we need to listen to your voice uh, and focus on your voice and not all the media and TV and, and things that the kids might be hearing, that they just need to focus on you. So Lord, I just ask that that is what occurs in our homes, that as families we're able to pray together to you, and that Lord, you'll just be a wonderful, calming uh, presence for the children as they're not sure what is going on when they're not in school and things are different. So Lord, just be there for us, Lord. Be in our hearts and help us to stay focused on the important things and what we can do to uh, come together during this time. Dear God, I just want to lift up praise for just the awe-inspiring stuff we see every day during a time of crisis, Lord. Um, I just know that you're working, and you're always working, you never stop. I just want to lift up all the families and all the people that still have to go to work. Uh, I know there's fear in that, there's stress in that, uh, and just there's angst and anxiety and all of those things come together, Lord, but really you're the biggest comforter that we have. You're, you're the person that wraps us up in a big hug and says, I got you. Uh, Lord, I just lift up all those people that are on, on the front lines, that they remember that you're on the front lines with them, that you're there to guide them, you're there to protect them, uh, even in the risk that there, there's a faith that's bigger than that. So I, I lift up all those people and uh, all the kids who are coming together and, uh, hey, it's, it's an opportunity to have an awesome role model too. They're, they're watching people just serve and uh, just help one another. And I, I think that's just awe-inspiring and how you can use this moment just to change the course of history for how we treat one another. Lord, we pray for our world, this world that you love so much that you gave your one and only son and said that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Lord, you love the world, and so we pray for the world. Lord, where there is sickness, and we know that there is much of that, we pray that you would bring your healing because you are the God that heals. Where there is stupidity and people doing dumb things, we pray that you would insert your wisdom. Where there is fear and unrest, bring your peace. Where there are tough decisions to make and hard calls to wrestle through. May your Holy Spirit speak clearly and show us the way forward. Lord, we're still a little shell-shocked about what's happening. We confess that we're still a little fearful about all that is ahead. We know that you hold us now, and we know that you hold our future. So help us to trust in you. Lord, we pray for those who are wrestling with worry, that you would calm them. We pray for those that are wrestling with economic hardship, that you would provide for them. 
Lord, wrap your arms around this world through your Holy Spirit and through your Holy Spirit at work in each of us. Lord, would you work out your purpose through this time? Help us to focus on you. Help us to turn down the volume of worry and to come back to what really matters to the heart of our relationship with you. And we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Considering who's sitting around me. But I can't help that I. 
yeah, yeah, that's right. I was lip syncing. That was for you guys too. Feel free to sing along. Uh, yeah, it'll be fun to hear that in your families. Post it on YouTube. That'd be funny. Yeah, I think if I'd have sung, maybe we'd have broken the internet, and we don't want to do that today of all days. <laughs> so I want to share with you a, a brief few words. I promise this will not be a 45-minute message. We have uh, James behind the camera and Jonathan behind the camera, both have, who have got stopwatches, and they're going to give me some kind of time to land. Uh, they're going to be a five-minute warning and a two-minute warning. I'm not going to tell you when they're doing that, though, just in case I choose to ignore them. All right, so <laughs> we'll see where it goes. But I want to talk about prayer because we're in a transitional moment in history, in our world, for us as individuals, for us as the church. Things are changing right before our eyes. And I think if we're realistic, as much as we would like this just to be a pause and then in a few weeks to hit the play again, the reality is when we get back to normal, it will be a new normal. And it will be challenging and we'll have to figure out life again. But in the midst of that, we must never forget that we have an unchanging God who is presiding over this situation. Because our God is unchanging in this transformative moment, we must make every effort to stay close to Him. And one of the best ways to do that is through prayer. By talking with Him. By leaning into Him by listening to him. And so today I want to share with you a few verses from Matthew chapter 17. We call this the transfiguration. As Jesus took some of his disciples aside and discipled them, they saw this incredible sight that would change everything they knew about the world forever. And as we talk through this story, there are three prayers that I think we must grab a hold of and pray this week as we commit ourselves to pray in the midst of transformation. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew 17. If you don't, go get it. If you want to look it up uh, on your phone, there's Mike going to get his Bible right now. If you want to open another tab on your computer and go to Bible Gateway, type in Matthew 17. These are the first few verses. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. This is the first prayer that comes out in this passage. You see, Jesus had been busy. He had been doing stuff. He had been going about his business, his father's business. Life was continuing. There was the hustle and bustle of ministry and work and, and stuff. And Jesus said, this is a time when I want to really invest in my team. And so he took three with him. They went up to the top of a mountain. The mountains have always been associated with going and connecting with God. God had done some of his best work and spoken most clearly on mountains. And Jesus said, hey guys, we're going away. We're going to be alone for a little bit. And I want to show you something. And I want to say something to you. And I want to show you something. It was through this time alone that God changed them. And so I think that our first prayer this week should be, Lord, would you change me through my time alone? Lord, would you change me through my time alone? You know, when we're busy, we've always got an excuse not to connect with God. I think one of the things that God is doing in this time is taking away those excuses so that we cannot be alone with Him. Did I say that right? Kind of. If not, you know what I meant. <laughs> we'll rewind it later. 
But here's the first prayer. Lord, would you change me through my time alone? Some of you know that I run and I like to try and do that every morning. And with a little bit extra time, I've been trying to go a little bit further this past week. And so I've been trying out some new routes. And I normally like to run on the, the quiet roads. So that I can listen to God, I can think through the day, those kind of things. But one of my new routes this week took me um, down Redbug Lake Drive. And I hated every moment of it. There were cars going by at 50 miles an hour. The noise was up. I was distracted. I was worried for my safety. And so as soon as I could, I turned off that road and into the quiet neighborhood because I wanted to be on the quiet road alone so God could speak. This coronavirus, this situation we found ourselves in, is taking us off the busy roads where it's hard to hear from God onto the quiet roads where we can listen to God. Our first prayer is, Lord, would you change me through my time alone? While we're on top of the mountain, verse 2, he was transfigured in front of them. That means that, that he changed. His face shone like the sun. He was covered in brightness. His clothes became as white as the light. This word for, for, for white as the light um, talks about a color that doesn't exist on our spectrum. You're not going to get this kind of white on a paint um, swatch at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's almost like Jesus is kind of elevated from the earth and uh, playing on the TV screen of heaven. And he's joined by Moses, the chief lawgiver, and Elijah, the chief prophet. And they sat down, the three of them, and they entered into this conversation. We don't know what they were talking about. We're not even sure if the disciples did. But I would love to have been part of that conversation because they were talking about the things of heaven. They were talking about God's will. Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the prophet, were giving a conversation with Jesus, the Savior, about God's great plan to redeem the world, to go to the cross to forgive sins so that heaven could be open to all and heaven could become the home for humanity that God loves so much. Peter said to Jesus, and I imagine he's like a kid in a candy store. Well, this is so good for us to be here. He's a little bit awkward. He doesn't know what to say. So he said, I'll tell you what, let me set up some shelters. One for you, one for Moses and Elijah. And, and, and that's what they did in the Feast of the Tabernacles. Is they would set up some shelters to, to honor those folks. And you appreciate Peter's desire to be part of that conversation of what's happening in heaven. Is the second prayer. Lord, in this time, would you give me insight from your heavenly home? Lord, firstly, will you speak to me while I'm alone? Secondly, will you give me insight from your heavenly home? Because it's when we look to heaven that we see hope. It's when we look to heaven that we see the glory of God. It's when we look to heaven that all of our fears and our worries subside. This week, as you pray, Lord, would you speak to me when I'm alone, but would you give me insight from your heavenly home? Let's connect with God. Let's, let's understand more of what heaven is like. Because the more we understand what heaven is like, the better we can function here on earth. One of my favorite songwriters is a guy called Keith Green. He died tragically at a young age in the 80s. Now, I want to be very clear, he's not a theologian. He's a songwriter. But in one of his songs, he's talking about heaven. And he said, I read in my Bible that it took God seven days to create the earth. And he says, we look around and we see how beautiful that is. And he says, we flip to the New Testament, and it tells us that Jesus is preparing a home for us in heaven, and that he's been working on that for 2,000 years. 
And if it took God seven days to do this. And God's been working on his home in heaven for 2,000 years. Then heaven must be a pretty special place. Now again, he's an artist, not a theologian. He's not making a theological point. Other than to say, heaven is infinitely better than we can hope for or imagine. And so during these times of prayer, ask the Lord for insight from your heavenly home. These are the prayers this week. Lord, speak to me when I'm alone. Lord, give me insight from your heavenly home. And then finally, Lord, help me trust you through the unknown. While I was speaking, suddenly a bright cloud covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, the voice of God, this is my beloved son looking to Jesus. With him I am well proud. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down and they were terrified. Because they revered God. They realized that their lives would never be the same. They realized that in this moment, they were going to be transformed. Jesus says, as he touched them, get up, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one there except Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, don't tell anyone about this vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And I imagine the disciples went, huh? Because not only had they had experience that changed their world, they didn't know what the future was. Jesus was talking about his death, which was the last thing that they wanted. And even more, Jesus was talking about his resurrection. They were being called to live in the unknown future. Not only did they... Were they afraid of the unknown? They were confused by it as well. Verse 10, so the disciples asked him, well, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? They're confused. They got questions that they don't know how to answer. Elijah is coming and will restore everything, he replied. That's worth holding on to as well. God's going to restore us. He's working out his plan for us through this. Jesus said, I tell you, Elijah has already come. They didn't recognize him. On the contrary, they did whatever they pleased to him in the same way that the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. The disciples are facing the unknown as disciples of Jesus and our world is facing the unknown today. And so we pray, Lord, help me to trust you through the unknown. Three prayers this week. Write them down if you need to. But pray them often. Lord, change me through my time alone. Secondly, Lord, give me insight into your heavenly home. Thirdly, Lord, help me trust you through the unknown. Is the promise of God that as we pray, He listens and He answers and He responds and He meets us. This week, I challenge you to spend more time praying than worrying. I challenge you to get right with God, to see Jesus, the one who gave His life on a cross to forgive our sins. To open up heaven for us so that we can have abundant and eternal life starting today. This week, Lord, change me as I come to you alone. Lord, give me insight from your heavenly home. Lord, help me trust you through that which is unknown. Can we pray? Lord, let these words be our prayer in this transformative time.
Lord, I pray that we would spend more time with the scriptures than we do our tweets. I pray that we would spend more time praying than we do worrying. And I pray that as we do, you would meet us, change us, and fill us with that hope of heaven, and help us to trust you through the uncertainty. Lord, there are many in our world, maybe even those who are watching uh, this broadcast today, who don't know you and need to know you so they can experience your peace and your hope and your trust. If that's you, I invite you to, just in the quietness of your room, in your hearts, Pray along with me. Lord Jesus, I realize that I am scared and fearful that I've messed up a lot. I pray that you would forgive me of the times when I haven't trusted, the times when my selfishness has got the better of me. Thank you that on an old wooden cross about 2,000 years ago, your son Jesus paid the price for me so that I can know you and I can know peace and hope and trust. Lord, speak to me as I pray this week. Lord, we ask that you would do a work in us. That even though the sea billows roll, that because of our faith and trust in you, we can know that it is well in us. And we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
singing that uh, line it is well with my soul many of us know the old hymn version of that and those words were just kind of uh, going through my brain and I just kind of felt this little weight fall off my shoulder and I suspect that was the, the presence of God just reminding me that it's okay Amen. once our souls are, are right with God through Christ all right I think we're nearly there I think we got through without too many <laughs> mistakes uh, and just so you know, this feels incredibly awkward for us, <laughs> but uh, I think we've made it. Let me share with you just a couple of quick announcements as we wrap up. Uh, first of all, I would encourage you to go to our website. Uh, on there, there's a big banner headline. Click on it. It tells you some of the things that we're doing and some of the ways that you can serve with us in making a difference. Uh, look in the next 24 hours for an email from me with some guidelines about how we can pray uh, in our homes, with our families, as a church, uh, together. Uh, I would remind you, uh, if you would, that uh, we still have lots of folks that we want to take care of and needs that we need to meet. And while we can't have an offering here, if you would like to continue your giving to the church, we would appreciate that. You can do that online at our website. Uh, or again through our uh, mail and our PO box is uh, Church Together PO Box 180356 Castleberry 32718. I know you missed that, but that's on the website as well, so, so go there. But here's the challenge this week. Here's three prayers that I would invite you to pray. Lord, speak to me as I'm alone. Lord, give me insight from your heavenly home. Lord, help me trust you in the unknown. As we pray that, I believe God will speak to us, carry us through this difficult time. Adam, you anything you want to say? Uh, I would just really just encourage you guys and just know that you are loved and yes. you are cared for and there are people willing to serve and it's an awesome opportunity for us as the church and as just lights of Christ to go and be that to someone else Amen. in whatever capacity you find. Amen. Jen, anything you want to say? Love and miss you. Yes, I miss you. This is so hot. <laughs> Virtual hug. <laughs> I can't imagine how that looked on the screen. Mike, anything you want to say? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> I said a lot. I think I sang a lot. <laughs> you are good. You are good. All right. Receive this uh, benediction. Lord, thank you for this time. Lord, would you bless us? And bless your church around the world. And bless uh, every person on this planet. Lord, would you make your face to shine upon them. Would you lift up your countenance to them. So that as we wrap up this broadcast. And we go about our day. As we figure out this new reality. We would go in your peace. And we ask and we pray. In Jesus name. Amen.